Friendship knows no distance. A shared ideal bonds souls together. A common cause unites hearts as one. Welcome to the wildlife heaven, Homer Simba from the Lion King, the cradle of human evolution, where fossils of human skulls have been unearthed dating back 2.5 million years. Today, our African friends bring us to Kenya, a country on the equator, on the coast of East Africa. First, we shall visit Nairobi, Kenya's capital city, and join Young Tao from Hunan province in his search for a supply of roses for his e-commerce platform. Then, we will fly to the beautiful and wild Masai Mara National Preserve, fighting elephant poachers with the help of Jiang Yiyang and Ma. Finally, we shall visit Mombasa's new harbour, the largest harbour in East Africa, to see what Liu Tingning, a Chinese engineer, is doing to protect the sea with his African friend Samson. Nairobi, the capital of Kenya, enjoys a balmy climate. In the Maasai language, Nairobi means freezing cold water. The annual mean temperature is only 17.7 degrees. This place is one of the most fashionable and modern cities in Africa. Richard is a courier working for the online shopping site Kili Mall in Nairobi. Every day he delivers at least 40 packages. In Kenya today, more than 1,500 couriers travel between factories, communities and villages. 80% of the merchandise on the Killymore website cannot be found in offline markets. Agnes is an office clerk. To buy office supplies before, she had to spend one and a half hours on the bus, travelling to one of the big supermarkets downtown. But now with Killymore, all she needs to do is tap on her cell phone screen and wait for the Chinese printer cartridges to be delivered to her office, which costs two thirds less than the ones in the supermarket. My name is Yang Tao, and I'm 36. I'm from Shimen County in Changde, Hunan Province, China. Kilima was named after Kilimanjaro, the highest mountain in Africa. We gave our online shopping site this name because we wanted it to be the largest e-commerce platform in Africa. At present, we have nearly 10 million products on our website, the largest merchandise database in Africa, as well as the first on the continent to offer same-day and next-day delivery options. We are also the first online shopping site to process all payments online. Every day, over 100,000 products from China are transported from this warehouse and delivered to customers. How is the water today? This is our warehouse in Nairobi, Kenya. More than 30,000 products are stored here. The most popular Chinese products on our website include four-piece bedding and electronic devices. Take this Huawei cell phone as an example. It's a special edition Huawei has created for the African market, costing a bit over $100 each. Killimore was founded in 2014. It's 1,600 African employees and 120 Chinese employees help Yang Tao to run the website. Being one of their motorcycle couriers is a most sought after job amongst the local people. They can earn $1.5 per package, so the more they deliver, uh, the higher their earnings. In 2012, Yang Tao first came to Kenya as an engineer for Huawei. It was here that Yang Tao and his colleagues spent two years establishing the mobile e-wallet system that is now the most widely used in Africa. That lay the technical foundation for the online payment system used by Yang Tao's current e-commerce platform. With our M-Pesa project, I was able to gain a deeper understanding of every facet and level of African consumer society. Its consumers, its distributors and its service providers form a colorful society. I can feel real prosperity in this dynamic system.
At this point, Young Tao is thinking about the future of Keeling Mall. Today, when I visited the site, my director of logistics told me that our empty return shipment to China had a daily capacity of 15 tons. That is a huge waste of resources. We are considering selecting a variety of high-quality African merchandise to ship back to China. So, what merchandise from Kenya will Kilimall make available to the Chinese market? These are pickup points for the Kili Mall in many factories and villages across Kenya. Miles is the overseer in charge of this rose plantation. After collecting his package, he is going to meet a special guest. Hi, Miles. I arrived. Simba Farm is one of the biggest rose plantations in Kenya. There we can find every type of rose that the world market has to offer. This one is also ready. Uh -huh. Maybe the two, the two stems have already 10 flowers already, mm -hmm. so I think it's economical. Yeah, very special. And very unique, yeah, yeah. These multi-stem roses used to be sold mainly to Western Europe, where they were very popular. But nowadays the market is getting saturated, so Miles has been forced to develop new markets with the e-commerce technology of Kilimall. If we can help more Africans sell their products on the Chinese market, this will be a very significant development. When they get richer, they will be able to purchase many more products from China too. After the flowers leave cold storage, they must be delivered to the markets within 20 hours. Now they've found their supplier, but how can they ship the goods to China efficiently? Deciding which city should be our starting point was a question that we were trying to figure out. On June 12, direct flights from Changsha to Nairobi by China's Southern Airlines were officially inaugurated. It takes only 11 and a half hours to fly. With this information, Yang Tao decided to use Changsha as his gateway to China. On Yang Tao's e-commerce platform, there are over 200 kinds of African food available. This week, Yang Tao and his African friends will visit the China Africa Economic and Trade Expo, where he hopes to introduce more quality African merchandise to Chinese consumers. These people are my partners at work, as well as my friends in life. I hope we can expand our business and create a better future. Masai Mara in Kenya is one of the world's largest wildlife conservation reserves. The inspiration for the movie The Lion King came from this magical land. Spanning over 1,800 square kilometers, it's the home to 95 species of mammal and 450 species of bird. I'm an actress and an artist. 
and I'm also a teacher for children in the mountains. And now I have another identity, wildlife protector. I previously did some work in Africa with Wild Aid. I'm also a Wild Aid ambassador for rhino conservation. Over the last decade, Jiang Yiyan has traveled between China and Africa many times. She's drawn attention to the huge effort that local people put into wildlife protection. In China, she made documentaries, held exhibitions and wrote books for charity to raise people's awareness, encourage donations to improve wildlife protection in Africa. This is the seventh time Jiang Yiyan has set foot in the Masai Mara National Reserve. Without wasting any time, she and her old friend Mark Goss have gone out onto the savanna to observe the living conditions of wild elephants. My name is Mark Goss. I was born in Kenya, in Nairobi. I've lived here my whole life, and um, the reason why I joined the My Elephant Project is to try and make a difference for elephant protection in Africa. Four years ago, Mark Goss came to the Maasai Mara and became the director of the Mara Elephant Protection Organization. Born and raised in Kenya, Mark speaks fluent Swahili. I'm a Kenyan, a white Kenyan, uh, just like there's black people living in America or different cultures all over the world. With the support of the Kenyan government, the Mara Elephant Protection Organization was founded in 2012. Now there are 35 rangers in the organization. Due to human activities and illegal poaching, the 450 elephants that live here are facing different levels of threat. This is the Alpha team reporting over a dead elephant. Okay, confirm Alpha team, please send coordinates of location in a UTM of the dead elephant. Over. Upon receiving the news from the patrols in the reserve, Mark and Jiang Yiyang immediately turned back towards the site. Our first attempt to pull it out has failed. We noticed that the baby elephant's trunk was bleeding, and then we realized that its trunk must have been cut off by something very sharp. So Mark's theory is that some poachers must have set up some traps or snares around the area. Perhaps they were just intending to catch some smaller animals or game. But the baby elephant entered that area by mistake and its trunk was severed by the snare. The wound is quite fresh and it is still bleeding. It appears to have been dead for less than a day. This elephant is a young bull elephant. If it had a collar on it, we would get what's called an immobility alert. So when the collar stops moving, we actually start getting alerts on our mobile device that collar, this collar has stopped moving, so we can go and, and see what's wrong. The collar that Mark is talking about is an animal tracking system specially made by Mara Elephant Protection Organization, but this elephant doesn't have one. After an investigation, it is confirmed that the baby elephant was killed by a trap set up by poachers. Mark decides to take immediate action. Twenty-six-year-old Elvis is a Maasai. He was born in a village nearby. As captain of MEP Rangers, he is in charge of ground operations. Because I grew from the local community, and I knew about the animals. While he is on the ground, Mark and Jiang Yiyang are in the helicopter above, providing guidance and security warnings to the ground team. Following the smell of smoke, Elvis and his team caught the poachers who were preparing to roast the meat over a fire. Luckily, the poachers were not carrying guns. But in the past, Elvis has often come up against armed poachers, 
in life-threatening situations. We have arrested uh, two poachers who have been threatening this area and killing some animals for bushmeat. They go and sell them and they also eat them. These patrol rangers are the front line of wildlife protection. In Africa, patrol rangers die every year in the fight against armed poachers. Mark feels very strongly about this. I mean, I could live anywhere. I could live, well, but um, the reason why I work here is because, not only because of the elephants that I protect, but also the people that I work with. Poaching incidents like this are no surprise to Jiang Yiyang. She's witnessed the cruelty of poaching firsthand in a nature reserve in northern Kenya in 2016. At that time, a white rhinoceros named Sudan was 42 years old and was too old to breed again. There are only three white rhinos left. From sunrise to sunset on the immense Kenyan savanna, they waited silently to become part of history. Last year, Kenya Wildlife Service relocated 14 black rhinoceros to the Tsavo East National Park, the largest wildlife reserve in southeast Kenya, to provide a safer habitat for this endangered species. So early. The Maasai village near the reserve is where Elvis lives. Jiang Yiyan gives lectures to the children here every time she comes to visit. Recently, the villagers have had some trouble. Elephants are looking for food, so they go into people's farms. And when they get into the farms, one elephant can destroy someone's hard work for a whole year in a very short time. What this map shows is that the elephants are in a much bigger area where the community is, where people are. Oh, but the Mara land is a good... Yeah, so you see, yeah. this is natural yeah, and unknown, but as soon as you move out, and then look, the other one is conflict, human-elephant conflict. So that's what I wanted to talk about more with you, is some of the solutions to poaching, but also to the human-elephant conflict. The introduction of the elephants was accompanied by the destruction of farms and even human casualties. Local people were forced to defend themselves from rampaging elephants using spears and arrows. In May of this year, Mara Elephant Protection Organization received 14 reports of elephants injured as a result of these conflicts. So, what solutions are there to ease the tension between human and elephant? The answer is these little black balls. This is an acacia seed. So that's what grows on the field. So that small seed, it's small for now, but when it grows, it will be a very light tree. A wrapping of charcoal and uh, clay with some fertilizer in it, and it can stay on the ground for a long time before it rains. Then when it grows big, the elephants eat it. And we planted some in October, and they're already like two feet high. It's a food as well as a seed. When a seed grows into a tree, it forms a natural and safe barrier. I have Kiki as a friend as, as well, so I think building those friendships is really the key to be able to, to protect African wildlife. And also we have a lot to learn from the Chinese in terms of protection.
Now that poaching and smuggling have become a global problem, Chinese enterprises are providing the Internet of Things, big data and artificial intelligence to help Kenya build a digital system which is able to provide sustainable and effective protection for wild animals. Every year, many Chinese volunteers like Jiang Yiyan come to Africa to promote wildlife protection. Many people think that Africa is so far away and those animals are so far away, so what, what can I do? I think I should not just film this beautiful land, but protect it as well. I hope that more people will have the opportunity, that our children and the future generations will have the chance to see the beauty of nature with their own eyes, see living animals in the wild instead of just in textbooks or documentaries. On Zheng He's navigation map, this place is marked as Manbasa. 600 years ago, Chinese sailors first set foot on this land. Today, Mombasa is the largest seaport in East Africa. In February this year, the construction of the Kapevu oil terminal began with the participation of China Communications Construction Company, scheduled for completion in 26 months. My name is Samson. My Chinese colleagues call me Sansong. I'm 30 years old. I'm an interpreter for the China Communications Construction Company's KOT project. I started studying international economy and trade at Liaoning University in 2009. When I was about to graduate in 2014, I learned that one of the Belt and Road projects would be launched in Mombasa. So I decided to come back to Kenya. This is a protected area of Kenya's waters. You need to get permission to sail here, even if you just come for fishing. Mombasa has the most beautiful white sand beaches on the East African coastline. It's home to over 2,000 species of marine animals, dolphins, humpback whales and beautiful coral reefs. As the contractor, the CCCC Fourth Harbour Engineering promised from the start that it would protect the seas while building the new port. In order to deliver on its promise, the CCCC hired a professional environmental impact assessment team to monitor the impact of the project on the seas. This is daily routine monitoring. We do it every day. My name is Liu Tingming. I'm 32 years old, and I'm from Pingxiang, Jiangxi Province. Now I'm the Chief Safety Officer of the KOT project. Recently, the situation has worsened at the sampling point. The excessive volume of suspended solids discharged from the engineering ships is polluting the surrounding waters. The project must be suspended for now. At the construction site, all the construction materials, large equipment and personnel are in position. One day of suspension causes a minimum loss of $300,000. Today, Liu Tingming and Samson are going out to where the dredger is working in the sea, hoping they can find a solution within two days. The Jinhai 6, a first-class Chinese-built cutter suction dredger, is indispensable in harbour expansion and dam cleaning projects. Every day, it can extract over 40,000 square meters of water-sand mixture, which would raise 60 football fields up by a meter each. This is its ship channel. It's anchored here and turns back here. The density is different. I don't think this will work. We need to consider the impact on the marine animals here. After discussions with the captain, Samson has learned that the 24-hour dumping ground for sediment has been set in a channel 12 kilometers from the harbor for the convenience of the engineering ships. With the ships constantly moving in the ocean currents, the discharged sediment is not able to sink down to the seabed. They take the sentiment all the way a distance of 14 kilometers to the deep sea. When I talk of deep sea, I'm talking of a place that is around 180 meters deep. We believe that the dumping ground was too close to the coast, 
The ocean would suffer a substantial negative impact as a result of the sediment discharge. So, based on our analysis of the situation, we asked KPA to move the dumping ground 1.2 kilometers further out towards the deep sea. The next morning, the 15,000 ton Junhai 6 sails out towards the deep sea as instructed by Liu Tingming and Samson. If they fail to choose the correct dumping ground, the project will be put on hold yet again. A special guest joins them on the monitoring ship. Samson has invited Professor yeah. Bernard Fulanda from the Department of Marine Sciences at the Puani University to come along with them. He will deliver the final assessment as a professional. We have one sampling point at a depth of 0.5 meters, so we put it into the water, and when it reaches the depth, we can read the depth on the instrument, as well as other parameters. We've got the parameters for today. Can you give us a rough assessment? As far as we know, the assessment turned out not that different from the previous readings that we have collected here. The data is quite stable, which means that this area suffers little impact from the project. Liu Tingming and Samson are both relieved with this result. It also proves they were right in their selection of the new dumping ground. I think it's a good job, and the best thing they did was for Leo to engage uh, the scientific monitoring so that he can be informed along the way if there is any problem. Tomorrow, the KOT project will start up again. China's speed has proven itself once again in Mombasa. My uh, Chinese has improved a lot. When I first came here, I had studied Chinese, but I was not able to communicate, you know. But now, I can communicate with our suppliers, purchase things, negotiate, and place orders. As per tradition, that before the project starts, the construction department invites everyone aboard to share a dinner they have prepared. Samson demonstrates the techniques he has learned from a chef from Guangdong and prepares fresh fish stew for everyone. Friendship knows no distance. <laughs> While basking in Mombasa's gentle breezes, they all propose a toast to each other. Tomorrow they will face new missions and challenges. A toast to Samson for what he's done for our project. <laughs> Those with shared ideals are never far apart. Young Tao moved Kilimore's headquarters over to Changsha as he wanted to establish a digital platform for cross-border trade and hold an online China-Africa economic and trade expo. Very soon, Jiang Yiyang will go back to Kenya again to shoot a movie featuring wildlife protection. She will integrate her experience of saving elephants into her role as a vet in the movie. As the KOT project advances, Samson has been promoted to safety monitoring engineer and Liu Tingming is building an EIA database using robot submersibles. In Kenya, there are over 400 Chinese enterprises providing 130,000 jobs for the local people. Since the Johannesburg summit of the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation in 2015, China has trained 67,000 professionals in various areas for Kenya. A sea is vast, as it rejects no water. Chinese people are willing to work with their African friends to set an example of building a community with a shared future for mankind.